Best actor in a leading role. Matthew McConaughey. Matthew yeah. McConaughey wrote a monologue for his acceptance speech, and I think that was pretty, pretty fucking hilarious and amazing. It was actually kind of inspiring. It was a very inspiring monologue, but that's what I'm saying. Like he took the time to write that. I wonder if that's been his acceptance speech for like ten years, and he's just been waiting for the moment to use that speech. Maybe. I wonder if he got help writing it. Did he have a ghostwriter for his acceptance speech? No, he's a classy, classy guy. He doesn't need a ghostwriter. Oh, so it's unclassy as a ghostwriter. No, it's just. I know what you're saying. You want that to be like a sentimental, you want it to be, heartfelt to mean moment. Something. Like Ben Affleck when he gave that inspiring speech yeah, last year. Very talented, Ben Affleck. Uh, McConaughey, I think that he should have. Uh, he impressed the crap out of me when I saw him in Wolf of Wall Street. And for that, he should have gotten an Oscar. Mm-hmm. And for this, it looks even more gut wrenching. Uh, uh, yeah, it's once again, I think I stayed to. I stayed, one access to these films was kind of limited sometimes for me to the it's just yeah like what aids and slavery it's a that's a heavy monday like that's that's a heavy monday man that's got a that's a lot you you got because you got this list of movies that you always wanted to watch but you just know they're just gonna make you feel like yeah, I haven't so seen, depressed about the universe i haven't seen philadelphia because I'm afraid of... Yeah, Philadelphia is great. Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a great movie, but yeah, exactly. That's the same That's the same stuff. It's too much. It's just a lot. And then you get into this thing where you watch it, and you're just like, oh. And I take these movies really personally sometimes. I get way too angry and emotional about it. I want to, like, save the universe. And then I get depressed and cynical. It takes my whole day to recover from watching <laughs> a really serious, intense film. So... So Matthew McConaughey is the best hacker now. Yeah. And he deserves it. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. That's right. He's going to catchphrase the crap out of that. All He's right, Kate, living. Kate Blanchett, and best actress. I She did a good job. Yeah. Very gracious. Mm-hmm. Nice. I'd move on. She deserves it for her career. She deserves it for her career and being beautiful. Uh, Jared Leto won for best supporting actor. I think he should mm-hmm. win for best supporting ombre hair. Um, <laughs> for just what? I... Like, you got to give Leto so many balls because he literally went into a salon and said, I have this long hair. I want you to put ombre in it because I am a man with ombre hair. Because I'm a rock star. Because he's a rock star with ombre hair. And he's a pimp. Oh, I like that. Remember, we, we talked about that nod to uh to his band to 30 Seconds, 30 to, Mars. Seconds to Mars. That was smooth. That was very smooth. That was the first. I, that's probably he the first album time. album dropped. I think that's the first time an Oscar winner has plugged Didn't their Did 36 Mafia plug band. something? Maybe. Did they, did they? No, they didn't. They just think yeah. they didn't have anything to drop at the time. No, the, I, they weren't they, ready. But I bet you they if they had, they would have been like, uh, we won an Oscar, by the way. Our album comes out June 6th. Check it out. That's easily all-time favorite Oscar win ever. 3-6 Mafia? 3-6 Mafia yeah. for Hustle and Flow. That's it. It's just because their name is 3-6 Mafia. Like, that's <laughs> the best name for an Oscar winner. Like, when you look at, like, the history, when an old wizened Suck man. Second Robert Redford. <laughs> when an old wizened man is writing in an ancient tome, it's like, 3-6 Mafia for... It's hard out here for people. <laughs> like, um, and then, okay, so Leto, good job. Jared Leto, way to go. You look awesome in that movie. I can't comment on his performance because I didn't, we didn't see Dallas Buyers Club, but it looked good. I saw the clip in the show. <laughs> it was pretty and it was like, I know a it, chick. I know it, uh, oh. I know it, um, I know it garnered some, you know, once again, garnered some controversy because once again, a person who isn't trans is playing a trans person and people would rather have a trans actor paying representation. But I don't know. It looks like he, it looks fair, maybe, hopefully. I don't know. For people who've seen it, let tell the judge it for us. Yeah, we'll watch it. Comment right. below. All right, best supporting actress, which made me super happy is Lapita Nyong'o Nyong'o right I said it right I did we watched high five high five Lupita Nyong'o because she's just first of all she's so pretty like I can't she's so pretty it's just she's so pretty she has like that angelic she reminds me like it's like that you know mean girls when like people are obsessed with regina george like regina george is flawless i just Uh want to say like lupita new is flawless she has two fendi purses and a silver lexus no i'm kidding but (laughs) (laughs) but she's so pretty and she's so her uh like her accent like just oh the way she talks 
she's so lyrical and poetic sounding. She just, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen her before Oscar night. And she like had a little story throughout the night and it ended with her victory Mm -hmm. and it was fun. And it totally won me over. She's just so, she's so pretty and she's so like just, and like, yeah, exactly the way how she accepted that award. Mm. Her speech was so nice and, and, and real and genuine and. She just seems like a really earnest person. She made it seem like an Oscar advertisement was yeah. her award. Yeah, exactly. She was like, follow your dreams. No, oh my God, Kiss what she Oscar. said, no matter where you are, you d- you do deserve for your dreams to be heard or something like that. That was, oh, that made me start tearing up. I started tearing up in her yeah. speech. She was really emotional. But she was Way really, to go, Lupita Nyong'o. Yeah, she was really good. And I really hope that she doesn't fade away. Yeah. I hope she doesn't get the curse. I hope that she does more mm-hmm. movies. Oh, isn't she doing that movie with Liam Neeson? Did that already come out? There's the a one movie about, with Liam Neeson. The one about the airplane. Exploding? The airplane where she's, the guy she's with She's in nonstop? Yeah, she's in nonstop. She's in nonstop? She is in nonstop. We're gonna go see nonstop. Yeah, for Lupita Nyong'o. Fuck Liam Neeson. <laughs> Fuck Julianne Moore. Lupita Nyong'o. Mm. She, she's a, a flight attendant. We're Whoa. totally seeing it for her. What a transformation. What a transformation. Into a flight attendant. I'm scared that like that's gonna be her follow-up to this amazing award. Don't do a Halle Berry. Don't do Catwoman. <laughs> anyway. Next up is... um We did mm-hmm. Best Director, Alfonso Cuaron. And I think that he deserved to win it just because Gravity, I guess looking at all the drama that it took to create Gravity mm-hmm. and then all the stuff that to put together. Because Gravity won a lot of technical awards and I think that totally deserved to win technical awards. And maybe that's what it is, just putting so much technicality together and on top of that creating an emotionally... Charged have movie. charged story that has real weight and gravity to it and, and great performances. That's a lot for a director to do. And apparently it took like forever to make this movie and it took two years or I don't know how many long it took, but he, I think he deserved it. I think that he put, you know, the director is responsible for what? It's for, the director is responsible for preserving the, the idea of the film. It's, they're responsible for making sure the message of the movie is what is delivered, right? Because you have all these different people writers and editors and cgi people and special effects and they all work on separate parts of the movie and yes film is a collaborative effort but at the end of the day i'm sure that they they start getting into the little universes of no this is this and this is this and the director's job is to kind of go okay all of that needs to be this and so i think that and is you had to do it for a long time yeah before. and i think that's a tough job Alfonso Cuaron. you're a leader directors are leaders and it's hard being a leader I, I don't know. I feel like the Academy really, like, loves him. And I feel like maybe they uh, love him too much. I think I would have liked to have seen a Scorsese win or a uh, McQueen win. Yeah. Instead. I, I, I mean, I agree. I, I, I could have seen McQueen win. Because, I, like I said, I wanted it to sweep anyway. So it could have been like, history. But, you know, whatever. I think that... I think that Alfonso Cuaron. I watched Gravity. And that movie looked like a lot. I thought I thought Gravity was the lock for Best Picture. Yeah. Um. Because usually that's how it goes. But I guess maybe nowadays that's not how it goes because they're trying not to just do that predictable thing. And 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 maybe overall, you know, Best Picture it, it, they awarded to the Best Picture because they wanted to award everybody who worked on the movie, everyone who was in it get deserve to get something you know what i mean and best picture is what awards the just the entire feel of the film it mm. awards the entire like epic scope of the movie um i don't you know i'm not even gonna lie let's just skip over some of the tech nobody cares about that stuff I no guess. we should acknowledge them no <laughs> costume design come on we have to be just as long as shitty as the real academy Awards. we're supposed to be short and sweet no please great gas how long have we been going really 21 what what are we gonna do it's ridiculous. Why does it take us so much to talk? Because we talked about it. Okay. So best costume design, Grace Gatsby, best makeup and hair styling, Dallas Buyers Club. We're skipping forward. Let's skip forward to best animated feature film, Frozen, which made my 10-year-old girl heart happy because Frozen was the bomb and deserved to win all of the awards and my soul. They also won for best song, which is good because I think that they deserved that as well. But I want to make a comment about that performance that poor Adina Menzel had to endure. And 
I know a lot of people on Twitter and were going, oh my God, she was amazing. She was beautiful. She was flawless. I'm like, I, I'm a vocalist. I've sung, I've done performances. I've been on stage. And I could, I mean, I just, I'm sorry. She's a beautiful singer. And I think she did a, as great a job as can be expected, but she cracked that last note. She screamed it because she couldn't hit it like without smoothly. So she yelled it. And th- I'm sorry, but I'm very angry. I have vocal rage for her. That is the only way I can describe it because the orchestra was playing way too fast. I don't know if it's that they didn't get an opportunity to um, rehearse with her or she didn't get enough opportunity to rehearse with them, but the whole tempo of the music was way too fast. She didn't get an opportunity to take any breath in. So probably one of the reasons why she couldn't hit that note is because she just didn't have enough support to hit that note. That's a, a For everyone who cares, that is a high E flat. All right, and she is not singing it in her head voice, which is probably much easier to do. She is belting a high E flat. Okay, that is a feat in of itself, and you're not always gonna do. I was telling Stephen the metaphor that LeBron James does not always play his star game. Sometimes he messes up. Adina Menzel is not always gonna play her star game, but the fact that she could even hit that note and that she attempted it, that's why that audience gave her a standing ovation. But it was part of it was the orchestra's fault. I don't care. You can hate me all you want. Orchestra played that song too fast. They didn't give her enough hate time. You. The orchestra's gonna hate you. Yes, people who love the, the orchestra. orchestra. The orchestra. The union. pro orchestra. The pro orchestra union. Alliance. The, uh, yes, the alliance of orchestration. Um, <laughs> they played that song way too fast for her. She didn't get enough support. They cut a whole stanza out of a song. Why does stupid U two get stupid two minutes of fucking that stupid song? Hey All man, right? it's allied with Mandela. Take it no, easy. No, Mandela is allied with Mandela. You know who else is allied with Mandela? Idris Elba. All right, who's beautiful and was playing Nelson Mandela. I'm not associating U two with Nelson Mandela. U two gets two minutes. Friggin' Adina gets what a rushed minute thirty. And then she got, you could tell at the end when you look at, look back at the video of her performance and you see her face kind of drop, her face is dropping because A, she knows she didn't hit that note the way she wanted to. And B, they play that song so fast. She was upset. You could tell she was upset. She didn't get her moment. They didn't give her a moment. Like, Let It Go is not a slow song. It does kind of have an upbeat tempo, but it's not so fast. Like, she sounded rushed. And I am, and that's how I feel about that situation. I feel that her moment was robbed. And I'm glad they gave her a standing O because I think the audience felt it too. You know so what I mean? Frozen swept, best. But frozen swept, and, and that's true, and that's best good. Song. And also, yeah, thanks John Travolta for mispronouncing her name. Thank you, Ellen DeGeneres, for correcting him. But seriously, one job, sir, one job. And her name is not that hard. It's phonetic. You pronounce Idina Menzel. That's it. It's phonetic. It's not difficult. 